I must be following all the right people on Instagram because it's like every time I open up the app and start scrolling through it, I uh, feel inspired. One of my favorite photographers who routinely posts uh, these beautiful, interesting uh, images of New York City on Instagram is Jason Little. Uh, he works primarily with film and film cameras. And uh, hey, if you're interested in film photography or just good photography in general, you should check out Jason's website uh, at jdevonphotography.com. He's also got a couple of Instagram accounts. Uh, one is at jdevonphotography and the other is at Halide Hustle. And I'm gonna provide links to all of that stuff below so go ahead and check that out now while you're here i want you to check out this interview i did with jason uh, he offers some great insight into his process and his thoughts on the state of film photography in general now for this interview i asked jason about things like uh, favorite cameras and his developing process but uh we're gonna start off with jason's favorite films favorite films uh, well classic ilford hp5 got a great look easy to use it's versatile you can use it for portraits, you can use it for street photography. Um, push it, pull it, and even if you don't get it quite right in development, it's not too much of a concern because you're still going to get a shot out of it. Um, after that, I would say Kodak Portrait 400. I love the subtlety of the colors and I just don't think there's a better looking color film out there right now. And then, an odd choice probably, um, Raleigh Retro 80. I love the contrast in that film. It's, it's a very high contrast film. Um, I, use, I have used it for portraits, but I most often use it for like ex external architecture. Um, I love it. Well, what I don't like about it is that it curls. And normally I hate that. I will stay away from films just based on the fact that they curl. And this is one of them, but I just love the look so much that I don't worry about it. Favorite cameras? Minolta XC7. Pretty sure this thing is indestructible. Um, it's a little heavy, but I think it's the perfect size. Uh, it just feels, feels, I don't know, can't describe it, but to me, the way a camera feels matters a lot. And this one is just, it's just kind of perfect. Olympus OM-1. Compared to the Minolta, it's lightweight, it's small, and it's just a fun to use camera. I like the, um, the shutter speed located around the ring here and you know it's like I said it's just a fun camera to use never fails the Bronica SQA you know what it is Ed I don't even need to say a lot about this camera it's just it's, it's just it's just great when it comes to development I don't really do anything out of the ordinary um, pretty much by the book um, I do stand development with Rodinal I push using microfin and I, well, I recently switched over to HC 110 from D76 but that's only because I got tired of mixing the chemicals so <laughs> there's nothing special going on with my development at all. Um, I like to keep it simple. I don't do any of my own darkroom prints. Um, something I want to get into but it won't be anytime soon I just don't have the space for it. Um, so for now whenever I do need a print off the negative shout out to Luster Photo Lab in the East Village always like them they always do a great job otherwise they just scan print and I get good results that way not I don't usually go over 8 by 10 you know I don't know how much the the image quality would change beyond that but at an 8 by 10 um, I'm happy with a scan and print uh, when it comes to my favorite stuff to shoot yeah I guess it's a toss-up between street photography and cityscapes or architecture but I think one of my larger goals is to find a way to combine the two, right? So take a building like Grand Central, for example. Um, everybody can agree it's a magnificent place, right? You know, you look at the details, you just think about all the work that went into it, the genius that went into the design and engineering of that place. And that alone is amazing. So if, if you take shots of just the structure, you know, you're gonna come out with something good. But when you incorporate the people, you add in a whole nother dimension to that, right? You know, whether it's tourists being amazed at the place or whether it's uh, commuters running from one end to the other to try to catch the train or whatever the case may be, 
when you can combine those two, the people and the way they interact with a, a place and the way they react to a place, I think that makes for a more compelling photo. And so that's something I'm trying to do more lately. No, nah, film's not dead, not at all. Um, I'm not really sure why people waste their time with that debate. It's not a debate. You know, film, film is just an option, you know. If you're into it, there's a community there for you. And, you know, granted, it's a niche market. It's smaller, but I think that the smallness of it is, is an advantage, you know, because in my experience, it makes it easier, especially for new people coming in, to get help and advice with things, as opposed to, you know, a lot of the stuff that sometimes goes on online in the, you know, the digital photography forums. And not all of them are guilty, but a lot of them are so contentious. It's just like, it's not, it's not worth your time. And people are really turned off by that. And you don't see that so much in um, the film communities. Uh, so that's a good thing. And another thing that people will, who will use film more often talk about is having creative control. Uh, which is a huge deal um, for anybody. But with film photographers, there's there's a degree of risk involved. You know, there's some anxiety there because you don't really know what your final result is like until you've wrote, you develop that role of film, you know, and hold it up to the light and see that you have 24 36 frames on there and even then you got to wait and take a close look at them and see if they're really up to your standards of sharpness and you know whatever the case may be with digital photography it's easy you know you take a shot check it out on your lcd and if you don't like it delete it and then right on the spot redo it and make sure it's what you want right um with film there's so much more involved you know the the, the littlest thing right you got to load the film into your camera properly you know to begin with i mean it sounds simple but it's it's one of those things that goes into film photography that sort of sets it apart right and you know, again, it's it's the end result that matters, but the process, it's the process of getting to that end result, I think that makes the difference. And some people like it, some people don't. Some people think it's too much work. Others like that extra, uh, the extra detail that goes into it all. So to me, it's not a matter of what's better. It shouldn't be a debate, you know, um, it's what you like, you know, it's about what your experience is with one or the other. If you have a preference, stick to your preference. Nobody is gonna judge you for that. And, um, you know, do your work, take your shots. It's the end, end result that matters the most.